what's up and good sunday everybody it is your girl your diva and knowledge lady mocha representing mocha's cafe day paris while i'm going to always be serving you wisdom knowledge and spiritual awareness thought it was very imperative that i did this particular recipe this content today pertaining to a very um not a very entertaining particular topic but it's a content that I feel is very well needed. Um, these are issues that we really don't speak upon in the black community because we really don't think it's that relevant. Um, we really don't think it's entertaining enough. But the truth of the matter is, um, it is these type of issues that have hindered um, a lot of us in some form or another. And if we are not aware of these issues that are hindering us individually, um, we will continue to hold ourselves hostage um to certain habits or um certain de decisions and not realizing that in the long run is going to only stunt our growth and it will only impede on our progress so you know again it's not something that's very entertaining it's not something that's a juicy topic or whatever but it is something that i'm sure that will be edifying to somebody who could really use um this particular type of message so with no further ado, today's recipe is about how popularity clicks will make you lose your identity. I thought it was very imperative that we did this particular content due to the fact that um, we are in a world today where so many people are looking for acceptance. So many people are trying to get in where they can fit in at. And it's an unfortunate thing that society is all about um popularity is not about um you know things that are really edifying things that will really uplift you and encourage you or really be beneficial to you in the future um it's all about just popularity it's a popularity contest with society at all it's, it's all about who looks better who has the most money um who has the biggest fan base i mean on youtube popularity is about not about who has the most edifying content or the most um resourceful content it's all about going where the action is always hot where things are always popping um you know is 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 content creators that are promoting um garbage that are getting more popularity compared to those that are promoting content that's edifying to the community and actually promoting knowledge are the ones that are getting the least amount of attention or the least amount of recognition and <laughs> um i had to really kind of reflect on this for quite some time to really think about what is it about us as far as being human beings that makes us very drawn to popularity and wanting to be in the high places where there's more admiration where there's more um recognition um places where um you basically stand out the most where you get the most um props you get the most um popularity and i had to kind of you know sit back and reflect and kind of do my little research and sometimes you know um i usually come up with these analogies to make a significant point and the analogy that i was able to basically come up with is i remember being in high school um and um you know in high school we all had different cliques in high school um you had your jocks which was the popular guys that were the athletes the basketball players the football players um the fastest track race runners um even the females um the cheerleaders hung out together the dance team hung out together um then you had your uh your nerds uh you know the bookworms the geek squads um they were popular as far as you know having high iqs and things of that nature and um they always bonded together they probably wasn't the most attractive but um they were the most brainiac you know <laughs> most intelligent for the most part um then you had your unpopular kids which, which were pretty much outcasts um those who like to dress in gothic or those who um was not that attractive kind of like the loners you know uh that just they just didn't fit in with none of the popular kids they even had their own clique 
um, to where they all had to bond together. You know, they was kind of like the underdogs. So there was always different cliques and different groups within high school. And um, I remember uh, when I had transferred from Savannah um, after my father had got to be where custody of us. And, you know, I moved up north with my stepdad and his wife. And I remember feeling really, really awkward. Um, I already was a woman that suffered from low self-esteem at that time, like most teenage women, young women. Um, when you're going through that puberty and you're going through that stage of still learning yourself and you're still... Um, struggling with trying to find a balance and um your maturity hasn't set in all the way um of course you're going to uh have some self-esteem issues and i basically uh i think i was like 17 16 at the time and um i definitely had you know self-esteem issues you know i just didn't feel like i had things that other kids in the high school had even though i had parents that had great jobs. They was taking care of me. We lived in a nice big old home. We wasn't wanting to struggle for anything. But um, just something about when you uh, start to engage in a different society, in a different world, um, sometimes you tend to feel inadequate, especially if you don't have um, the, the skills or the tools or the equipment to fit in with that particular society. And basically, um, I had came from New York transferring transferring from um, a school basically uh, full of blacks. It was mostly an urban school. It was a mixture of Latinos and all of that. The transfer from that type of environment to an environment where it was just all white. <laughs> um, it was basically Caucasian community, um, and we did have a few Indians, and um, that that were a part of a tribe of you know, in the Connecticut area. So um, it was basically um, a lot of Indians and Caucasians. And I totally felt out of my element. I didn't feel like I belonged there. Um, it, it just, I didn't fit in. Um, not only that, there was a lot of interracial dating in that particular town. So that really made me feel awkward um, because most of the brothers there, I wasn't even light enough. Um, if you wasn't white, you wasn't right. It was a lot of interracial um, couples in that particular area. That's all I saw in the grocery stores. That's all I saw in the movies. That's all I saw everywhere I went. And that was pretty discouraging for me as a young black woman to see that uh, most of the brothers there was just checking for um, females of other races. So I basically felt pretty inadequate, you know, and I would meet a few guys here and there, but, you know, there was just not no connection, nothing was really jumping off, so you know how it is, you know, when you're young and everything, so anyway, um, but I remember struggling, um, not being able to fit in, and once I got to make friends, and once, um, you know, people got, um, used to my presence at that high school, and I was no longer the new kid, you know, I was able to kind of blend in, but even then, I still was not able to blend in with the popular kids, because again, um, I, I did not uh, carry myself on the level that they did, I mean, most of the popular kids was very arrogant, um, bougie, you know, they talked down to anybody who wasn't wearing um newest kicks or whatever your, your shoes could only be three months old but because they able to afford to buy jordans every six months you know <laughs> they still looked at you as a low class low common denominator so you know i didn't roll with the popular kids because i knew um i would never really be able to keep up with them and their you know requirements of what it would have required me to qualify as being part of their clique so i ended up just kind of kicking it with the average kids um you know they wasn't the most popular but they wasn't the undertakers but um i ended up you know you know i'm um, just kind of kicking it with the average kids that wasn't popular but they wasn't like i said total outcast and that's why i felt comfortable because there was no threats there was no competition um, people like to go where they feel comfortable. People like to go where they feel accepted. And um, that's basically what I did. I went where I felt accepted. So um, I didn't have to, uh, you know, put that type of pressure on myself or whatever. So, um, and that's basically what I'm starting to notice with the way the world operates today. Um, people are going where they feel the most comfortable. Um, it's the stating that birds of a feather flock together. And that's a very old saying, but it's a very true and valid saying to this day that weighs so much truth to it. 
because again, people want to go where they can relate. People want to go where they can associate and people are not going to go uh, where they can't associate because again, um, you know, you try to fit into something that um, you know um, you necessarily don't have the skills or abilities to, to, to fit in. It can become very intimidating. It can, it can become very threatening to you. Um, it can really weigh in on your low, weigh, weigh in on your self-esteem if you try to fit into a group where you don't belong because you will break your neck trying to, you know, do the things that they have the luxury or uh, the benefits to do. And you, on the other hand, you nowhere have the abilities, the connections, or the skills to be able to fit in. So you will be miserable. So a lot of times people, like I said, people are going to go where they feel comfortable. Um, that's the way it's always been. But the bad part about it is that sometimes what I'm starting to discover now that I'm older, not even sometimes, but the majority of the time, it's not really good to try to fit in with popular cliques. And what I mean by popular cliques, I don't care where what uh, type of um, environment is not good to fit in with clicks on the job, is not good to fit in with clicks on YouTube, is not good to fit in with clicks in your neighborhood. In some cases, not even good to fit in with clicks in your own family. Um, and there's many reasons to that. And that's the reason why I'm doing this content, basically about popularity clicks will make you lose your identity because that's really what ends up happening. And what we have now, we have a lot of adults because, again, all of us are out of high school. So, of course, um, I'm not talking, referring to high schoolers. That was just an analogy I use. But we all are adults, meaning we all are, the majority of us are over the age of 30. <laughs> and in many cases, some of us are 40 or 50. And I find it amazing that you have so many grown men and grown women to this day who are still trying to fit in um, with the popular group and you would think after certain individuals become a certain age they learn how to um, get out of that phase of trying to seek approval and be accepted because they fear rejection um, they are still seeking um, acceptance so basically they're tr willing to go places um, that will accept them um, even if it means um, not growing and not being elevated. They just want to belong somewhere. It's no different than um, living in the hood and, you know, you struggling, you living with a family and y'all, you know, y'all in poverty and y'all kind of struggling and y'all don't have a lot of money. You can't buy the, afford the most, your parents can't afford the most expensive um, designer label clothes and shoes for you. And you're surrounded by around gang members um who partake in criminal activities but at the same time you see more of the glamour than you do um the pitfalls of becoming a gang member you see all of them got nice cars you see all of them wearing nice clothes you see them not um working at uh minimum wage jobs where they got to struggle um you basically see from your perspective that you know a lot of these you know individuals that partake partaking gangs are living a good life you know um again they got everything and don't even have to struggle for it and not realizing that it looks like that from your end because you don't know what all they have to ties into that for these gang members to be able to afford these cars and clothes and everything because they're killing people um you know on their block that's selling drugs and they want to be the only one to sell the drugs so they knocking off other people so they could be the ones to run that block and benefit from all the crackheads and you know or they they jacking or rubbing other jacking or robbing other drug dealers so they can be the man to regulate the block or the one man to regulate the block and benefit so again you know we always want to fit into certain situations especially when we see um all of the benefits from the outside but until you are actually in that situation you will see that some things some of these clicks um there's more um burdens than blessings um there there's more good than bad that comes out of getting involved um in certain groups and cliques and everything so um usually by the time you find that out you usually weigh in too deep you weigh in over your head and sometimes it's kind of hard to remove yourself 
from certain cliques once you get involved, you know. So anyway, um, as I was implying that, you know, we have a lot of grown men and grown women, they're looking to get accepted. And again, there's a lot of drawbacks that come with that um because what tends to happen is when you're too busy trying to get in where the popular folks are um you're trying to fit in and become a part of the popular cliques um whether it's on your job whether it's on youtube you're a content creator and you may not feel like your channel is growing enough you may feel like you're not progressing so you try to get in good with the most popular content creators. Um, you basically try to bond with them because you're not secure enough for your channel to grow on its own. So instead, you try to bond and get in good with these content creators that are very popular and have a large um, number of subscribers following their channel. So you figure if you get in good with them and they allow you to be on their panels, they'll allow you to be on their channels that people would notice you um, through your through um, your presence of being on their panels. Um, you feel like that is a benefit for you as far as being able to earn more subscribers. You know, it's, a, it's called clout chasing them. Um, a lot of content creators, they don't feel confident enough in waiting for their channel to grow alone and waiting for their subscribers to notice them on their own. So instead, they jump on the popularity bandwagon. Um, they will go to the content creators that have the most um, popularity and publicity. Um, there's been, in some cases, um, some content creators that were already doing pretty well in the click. Um, they was already growing, they was already striving, um, but because the click that they were in decided to go a different direction or they wanted to grow or they wanted to blossom, um, they decided to betray that click and ride off with um, another click, you know, because they want to go somewhere that's going to continue to promote the same lack of knowledge that they're used to promoting. And sometimes when a person is in a click and that click wants to go a different direction and say, okay, uh, this was fine. I know we've always done it like this for five, six or seven years, but guess what? Today we're going to do things different. And see, for some people, that's scary to them. Some people do not like change. Some people love to stay on the same negative level of thinking that they've always stayed upon. Some people are comfortable staying in one lane and in one zone. So the moment that click starts introducing something new to them, that's out of the element, especially if that new level is going to take them out of an element to where now they have to really be creative and they have to really be talented, they will jump ship and go ride off and rock with other folks who probably still promote the same level of negative content that they will before they stay with the click that was loyal to them and help them to get out there in the first place. They help them become successful in the first place. So they're going to ride off with a whole nother click, even if that means betraying the click who originally helped them to get on. Because again, um, you have a lot of people, they just straight spiritual vampires. They're all about sucking people up and getting as much as they can get out of them. And once they done dried that person out, they're going to the next person and they're going to do the same thing. They're going to go from one channel to another to gain all this notoriety and popularity because, again, it's based on the fact that a lot of these grown men and grown women, they don't have confidence in themselves. And a lot of us have confidence misconstrued we're in a society where people are so gullible to the point that they think cockiness is confidence um they think somebody who jokes around a lot who clowns a lot who loves to always put on the show they mistake that for confidence you know and the truth of the matter is um just because somebody is you know always obnoxious or always um cracking jokes or um, you know, always putting up this uh, uh, this comical performance. It does not mean they're really confident. Um, what has happened is a lot of people learn to use different defense mechanisms to um, compensate for where they feel like they're lacking. For instance, um, you had the actor Robin Williams who did it. Um, Robin Williams was a, a very popular actor. Um, he was the one who um, did the movie Mrs. Doubtfire. Um, 
He's done a couple of movie, movies. I can't think of any right off the head, but he was very, very popular. And a lot of people admired Robin Williams for his humor and his wittiness. And all the time behind closed doors, the man was depressed. He was straight depressed. And um, it came a point when, you know, he just could not deal with the pressures or the burdens of the world. And he ended up taking his own life. And all this time, people who have been watching him do his little comic stand-ups, watching him um, doing his, all his funny roles in the movies, the man showed no sign of depression or stress. And when it boiled down to it behind closed doors, this man was being tormented by his own demons on the daily. And I really believe that there's a lot of brothers and sisters in the YouTube atmosphere, a lot of them are dealing with some type of level of depression. Um, just because it's not obvious and they're not wearing it on their chip, um, you can always tell when a, when a woman or a man is really not that confident um, in, in who they are, you know, um, especially when they have to go from, um, from, from popular, um, from from one popular group to another popular group, um, if they're doing things as, as far as, uh, you know, shading people, insulting people, um, you know, throwing shade at people, um, always got to throw jabs and insults, things of that nature, um, are always provoking people for no reason, um, being disrespectful to people, um, people who simply just don't agree with their views, um, they disrespect them, um, they basically are very petty, and just because we see people, you know, we, we take humor in it, you know, um, me being a human being, I, I take humor sometimes and watching people crack on folks and people throw shade and people, you know, throw little insults and stuff, and sometimes it's humorous, but I realize that a lot of it comes from the fact that people are not going to um, really show their true colors. Instead, they're going to use these defense mechanisms to um, conceal the, the real struggles and the real demonic battles that they are dealing with behind closed doors. Instead, they're going to camouflage, camouflage it and conceal it with the shade, with the picking on folks, um, with hanging out with the other popular folks. Um, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's so many different ways people deal with depression and people deal with loneliness. And um, that's another thing that, uh, that's another re factor that causes a lot of people to want to be with the popular cliques on YouTube, on the job and on the workplaces and stuff like that is because um, uh, some people, you have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, some people cannot stand to be alone. Some people, they cannot handle isolation. Being alone and being to themselves makes them depressed because some people, when they are alone, they get to thinking and reflecting on everything that ever went wrong in their life, or they feel sorry for themselves, especially if they're going through physical disabilities or emotional um, withdrawals, if they're going through things that are personal to them, things that are really affecting them and eating at them emotionally and mentally, um, if they are alone, they will reflect on these things and it, it will tend to eat away at them like cancer. So you have some of these individuals who constantly got to be around other people. They have to be in clicks, whether if those clicks was on YouTube, rather if those clicks are in the workplace, they got to be around people. They cannot handle to be by themselves, or if they are by themselves, you're going to only see them on YouTube by themselves once in a blue moon, you're going to see them at the workplace by themselves once in a blue moon, but for the most part, you're going to always see them with a group of people, because again, being with a group of people takes them away from that feeling of isolation, which leads to depression. Because again, um, everybody's not on YouTube, everybody's in the workplace that is in these popular groups, they're not going to be transparent with you and really tell you and share with you their personal battles and their personal um, depressions that they're dealing with. Instead, they're going to uh, cover it, like I said, and use the defense mechanisms, either assaulting folks, either always joking around, either being obnoxious. It's different ways that people deal with their pain. You know, uh, and, 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 you know, again, people are doing what they have to do to find comfort within themselves. Um, you know, so th there are many reasons that people are hanging with cliques. Um, you're rarely ever going to catch them by themselves. You're going to always see them with an entourage or a group of people. 
But this is the problem. Even though it may bring you comfort, it may bring these individuals comfort, it make them may make them feel safe because they got eight, nine people who they are constantly around them in the workplace or on YouTube or you know, you got some people, for instance. Um, I know I know a woman now, she this this she's she's every bit almost in her early fifties. This chick cannot be by herself. She's never been by herself. Um, she's always had to have people around her. You know, um, when she would go out, she always had to have friends with her, um, always had to have company to her house. Um, and to this day, you know, she still really cannot stand being by herself. She only feel relevant. Some people only feel relevant when they got an entourage, when they got a group of people in a circle that's praising them on and making them feel relevant and co-signing with them all the time. And to this day, she still does it. Um, she cannot be by herself. But again, there's that, that there's a lot of disadvantages to constantly um wanting to be engaged or a part of popularity clicks because what tends to happen is that um once you adopt a click what usually tends to happen is that you have to adopt their theories you have to adopt their morals you have to adopt their values uh, and you have to pretty much uh, adopt um, um, their outlooks. And that's the bad part about joining clicks on YouTube, joining clicks in the workplace, joining clicks in your neighborhood, because most clicks, once they have formed a group, meaning they're only going to allow people that adopt their morals and their values. Like, for instance, um, with, with my uh, particular YouTube um, panel um I, we had we do what's called the anti-fuckery um youtube um community where we're against negative content we're against negative message con content and messages um so far that i know of is cool gent is classic ruby is poetic kales and myself um it's probably other people out there who also support the same views and um that's what made us bond together because we were just against a lot of the things that we were seeing from other content creators and i'm not knocking what other content creators do but my thing is, I have to go where my spirit feels welcomed. And like I said, that's usually how cliques are developed. Um, people are, are going to build a group in which certain individuals will be embraced and accepted and appreciated. So everybody, everybody that's really the initial purpose of how a clique or a group is developed in the first place. So what tends to happen is... Um, it's not so much an issue as long as the click is a positive if they have if they're going into a positive direction in which they are willing to um even if they come together they're willing to still embrace each other's um differences and not shun one or the other because that person wants to grow or that person has a different outlook in other words they can grow together even if it means um people going their separate direction and they don't consider the threat just because a person in their group um, decides to do something different or decides to work with other people, vice versa, whatever, because the group is basically um, orchestrated on a positive um, foundation. So cliques that have been developed through a positive foundation, it really doesn't matter what different directions um, each of the individuals go within that group. Um, the group is going to stay solid. The group is going to continue to grow because um, all of these individuals came into the group with a positive outlook and understood that in order for them to grow, it takes going different directions. It takes, you know, doing things differently from time to time. So um, there, there will be less drama. There will be less chaos when a group comes together and is developed off of a positive foundation. But what tends to happen is groups that come together based on um, negative foundations, basically, basically to make it more clear is that um, if a gang only decides, just to use an example, if a gang, if a group of teenagers decide to form a gang in their neighborhood and basically 
initially they probably decided to form a gang because all of them share the same struggles, which was poverty. So let's say these group of teenagers all decided to form this gang because we all are in poverty. We all can kind of relate to each other. So it, it starts off for like a, an, a positive um, purpose. Okay, we all are in a struggle together, you know, so we all are here for each other, you know, to a certain degree. But Let's say if they decide to not come together for that purpose, but they decide to form a gang because they want to rob people, they want to break into people's homes, they want to um, rob convenience stores because now um, it's all about trying to make money. It's all about, you know, um, trying to profit of, off of other people's um, misery if it means knocking folks off or, you know, throwing rocks at the back of their head or sucker punching them in the streets to get their wallet to take the money and use their debit cards or whatever, jacking drug boys, just doing all type of unethical things in the community um, to gain wealth or whatever, then nine times out of 10, even though all of them are doing this for that purpose, sooner or later, there's going to be a conflict. Because what tends to happen is when people come together and, and, and build a foundation off of negativity, usually somebody is one of two things that happens. Either somebody becomes very egotistical or somebody becomes very greedy. It's one or the other. It's like um, New Jack City. <laughs> and y'all know I'm always using my movies. You know, I'm an I'm a old school, I'm an old school gangster girl at heart. So damn it, y'all can judge me all you want. I love my New Jack City. I love my minister society. I love my boys in the hood. So crack on me later. But anyway, but instance with New Jack City, when they first uh had the Cash Money Brothers come together, everybody was on the same pace, you know, with making money. Everybody was down with, you know, selling the crack in the black community because that was the thing that was, you know, getting brothers paid at that time. So everybody was down by law. Nino, G Money, you know, everybody was on the same queue. But what ended up happening once they started doing well, once money started flowing, um, you know, sooner or later, you know, folks forgot where the hell they came from and egos got in the way to the point to where, um, you know, uh, Nino became very obnoxious. He became um, basically a tyrant um, not, and he became a tyrant and a dictator to the same brothers who started off with him. Um, when he was a low-level drug dealer. And once they took over the car and started getting big, so did his ego. Um, he did a lot of things that was out of pocket, um, you know, messing with G-Money's, um, you know, uh, side chick or whatever, and, you know, stepping out on his own woman who was there with him, who brought her cousin on to help him, you know, because her cousin played as Christopher Williams. Um, he brought all of his skills and his abilities to um, CMB to help them make some money. He was doing handling the financial part. So basically, he had all of these people that was sought off with him and helped him to get to where he was before he became this big old drug lord. And as soon as the money started getting good, he started flexing on everybody. He was sleeping with his main man girl. I mean, you know, he messed around on the woman that was with him. Um, then he flipped on um, the uh, Christopher Williams who helped with the money, you know what I mean? He just got very ruthless um, as the game progressed. And sure enough, what ended up happening was he was turning so many of the people who was with him, he turned so many of them against him by being so nasty and obnoxious and, and ruthless to the point um, G-Money started making deals on the side to the point because, you know, uh, like he was saying, if G-Money said, if you would have been taking care of business, he was like, if I would have been taking care of what? Say it again, say it again, say it again. And you know, that's when he took that thing and damn stabbed, you know, his old lady's cousin in his hand, you know what I mean? It's about <laughs> pretty mother effer, you know what I'm saying? So he got beside himself and to the point where everybody just, you know, nobody cared no more. Everybody started going their separate ways. G-Money got stressed out. He started 
taking drugs himself, you know, um, because he couldn't really deal with Nino and his ego. Um, it just got more and more spot out of control. And we know the ending of the movie, movie, you know, everybody ended up losing in the end. You know what I'm saying? It started off as a big organization, an operation that was popular. Even, if, even though it was just a movie, but I like the theory behind it is that um, you really can't trust anyone, you know. It's just, um, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, that uh, he got beh beside himself. And that's what happens whenever a clique comes together um, on, 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 on a negative note. Um, it, will, it was bound to self-destruct anyway because of the whole purpose for them getting together was to sell drugs, you know, um, profit off of these dope fiends, you know, and crackheads, and eventually it was going to self-destruct, um, you know, if they didn't kill themselves, the law was going to shut them down, I mean, we know when it comes to selling drugs, one of two things happen, you dead, you end up dead, or you go to in prison, one or the other, people start snitching and ratting on each other, I mean, you know, everybody's loyalty is going to be tested soon another and that's what ended up happening it just went sh shot to hell basically but again i know it's just a movie but um i know real life situations that also panned out the same way um people who got together because they shared the same negative views they shared the same negative perceptions and um they got together on the strength because of it and sooner or later it came back to haunt um their initial connection in the first place and that is and, and that that is what's happening with a lot of these cliques. Um, that's why I stated that popularity cliques will make you lose your identity because what happens is you tend to become so loyal to those who have put you on and those who have um basically welcomed you into their clique now. Um it, it gives you a sense of obligation now to where um you know you really can't make any ways um, with a click once they accept you, once they embrace you and say, okay, you're a part of us. Um, we are um, welcoming you into um, our society, into our group, and this is the way we do things here. And, in order, and, and this is why we're accepting you. This is why we're embracing you because you seem like you share our theories you um adopt our morals and our values so therefore we will allow you to become a part of our clique most cliques are not going to allow an individual to become a part of it unless that particular individual if they don't feel that individual is not going to fit into what they're trying to do so basically once you take that oath and you decide to become a part of a clique whether if it's on youtube whether if it's on the work in your workplace or whatever now you are at bay you're basically um you're in debt to them and how they do things because it's one thing if you originally would have started the click and you had that would have gave you the power to decide who to bring in and who to push out but when you decide to jump on somebody else's band wagon okay that gives them the power to be over you because basically they allowed you and they welcomed you in now the other catch is you have to be careful how you became a part of the clique now this is what i mean by this a lot of people come into a clique by default meaning that the only reason they became a part of that clique was because they were kicked or eliminated from a prior clique because nine times out of ten if the other clique is willing to put you on they're putting you on due to the fact that um they know you were vulnerable and you was looking for a place to stay it's kind of like a homeless people a homeless person that was kicked out of a shelter had nowhere to go so here it is this other shelter they're willing to take you in because right now they know you're vulnerable and you're pretty much up for grabs and not only that if the clique that's accepting you had issues with the clique you were initially a part of that was also against them of course they're going to embrace you because they know that you are going to put them on with all of the secrets of the clique that no longer has any ties or dealings with you, okay? So this is what I mean by coming in by default, meaning that you and you had a best friend and you and that best friend, y'all was like this, y'all did everything together, y'all club together, y'all shared y'all personal secrets, y'all know everything about each other, y'all had a solid friendship, 
And for whatever reason, y'all fell out. Um, maybe somebody broke the sister code. Somebody, your, your, your bestie slept with your ex-boyfriend and was lying to you and wasn't woman enough to come to you and tell you she was dealing with him. Whatever the case, y'all fell out about something petty. All of a sudden, the same group of girls that never liked neither one of y'all, you decide because you're so angry and upset with what's going on in the friendship, you decide to build a new friendship with your foes that was one of, with these girls, these new girls that was once upon a time your arch enemy. And you decided to side with these broads and make friends with these broads because you want to spite your friend who got rid of you because you violated the sister code, okay? And instead of you being a woman up that admit, okay, I was wrong, I shouldn't have been sleeping with your ex-man, I should have been woman up to see how you felt about it, blah, 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 you decide to take the punk and coward way out and go become friends with your arch enemies all because you want to prove a point to her that you're not going to be wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because you got some adults, they're just not going to be wrong. They're just going to move on and act like they wasn't out of pocket. And they didn't, they, 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 they were not um, being unloyal. You know, they're not going to own that they were being unloyal. They'll just move on and act like it never happened. So, of course, the new girls are going to take you in and let you be a part of their group because now they know being that you left your friend on bad terms, that nine times out of 10, you're going to spill all the beans. You're going to tell everything. You're going to put it all out there. You're going to put them on to all of the secrets. And that's what happens with a lot of these cliques. And the worst thing any man or any woman could do is build a bond with a clique that once upon a time had beef or had animosity towards the group that initially put you on when you was a nobody. And people do it all of the time. Um, instead of them taking an L, okay, this group eliminated you, move on gracefully, and let that be. But some people are so low, they got to take things to another level. They are willing to rebuild a brand or rebuild a bond with the arch enemy who was praying for the dismantling of the clique that, they, that initially pushed the individual out. So again, when you come into a clique by default, meaning the only reason you, you teamed up with them was because um, you fell out with them and you needed a new place to reside. You needed a new group to accept you. If you think for a second, it's not going to be in the back of them, their mind that you won't do the same thing to them. You have another thing coming. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's no different than if a woman is messing around on her husband, you know, with, the, with a side dude, you know, and the husband finds out the husband divorces her. So now she has to move on. So, of course, the side dude going to be like, OK, we can be together. We can start a relationship together. But my thing is that side dude that you used to creep with when you was married, he's going to watch you 20 times harder than a hawk compared to your husband because he is always going to remember you cheated on him with your husband with your husband so if you think for a second you're going to ride off into the sunset with this dude and he's going to um not be cautious of you and knowing he was your side dude once upon a time then you got another thing coming that is the same thing with these clicks if you if you left a click not if rather if you left or you got put out either one if you join another clique that you got left or eliminated from, if you think they're not watching you like a hawk, especially if you're up there sharing everything you did with the past clique that you was a part of, they're up there listening to you. And why you think you're showing your loyalty by putting a moment about everything the other clique did because now you are at war with them, they're feeding, they're sucking up everything you're saying because at the same token, they're going to take in all the information you give them, of course, because it's helping them to, 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 uh, keep pushing whatever motives they have, but they're going to always second guess you because they saw how disloyal you were, how disloyal you were to the clique that you left or you got eliminated from. So never join the clique by default. If you're going to join the clique, make sure it's not because they know you fell out with another group or you got kicked out by another group because basically they're not embracing you for the right reasons. 
they're not embracing you because they really want you to be a part of the team. They know you are vulnerable and they know you are angry. You got past issues with the group you love. So you're going to be vulnerable. You're going to tell it all. You're going to spill it all. And that's just more ammunition for them. So that's the reason why you don't want to join a popular clique based off of default. Um, also, uh, what are the points I wanted to make? Um, who's calling me right now? I'm going to have to call you back. Um, so yeah, it, these are things you have to be cautious of and you got to be wary of. Um, another issue with joining popular cliques is that you will eventually lose your identity because what happens is now you have put yourself in a situation in which you are now obligated, meaning you are obligated to go with the program because if you try to buck, if you try to buck the system, for instance, um, if you decide to join a YouTube clique that's all about um, bashing men and that's what they've always done and they have embraced you and accepted you and you try to come in and you want to share different perspectives and you want to share examples in which not all black men are bad or have issues and you want to propose that to them you automatically are going to create tension because again they brought you onto their platform they brought they brought you into their group so the last thing uh you a person is supposed to do if a clique has accepted you is that you are trying to introduce your own theories your own ideologies um your own concepts and perceptions because they're automatically going to feel threatened that you are trying to take over or you got an agenda because you came in there acting like you was down initially for um what that foundation of that clique was built upon and now you are trying to change the dynamics by introducing different things you can't do that because what's going to happen is you're going to create enemies you're going to create conflict because that's like going to somebody else's house and because they got a lot of goddamn flowers flowers on their furniture they got this ugly furniture with a bunch of goddamn flowers on it and even though it's tacky and our furniture look, looks like it came from the thrift store you can't come up in there wanting to propose oh well why we can't get a leather section or sofa this furniture is so outdated this furniture is the kind of furniture my grandmother had i mean it's still got the plastic and everything on it you can't come up in there changing and shifting the atmosphere introducing your your thoughts and your ideas because they're automatically going to buck you on it because you're coming up in their turf you know what i mean so that's the bad part and be a part of somebody's clique because even if you don't agree with half of the stuff they're saying, even, okay, let's say this way. Let's say even if you agree with the majority of what they say saying, right, because you wouldn't have been a part of that clique if you didn't agree with their theories. But the moment you just go against one small thing and you might be like, okay, well, I feel this way or I think this way, then it's going to be a problem. Because the way they look at it, you are on our turf. Who are you to be coming, introducing anything? So what ends up happening is you obligate yourself to be in the yes man or the yes woman. Meaning you basically got to agree. You got to co-sign on everything to keep the peace. Even if it makes no sense to you whatsoever. Even if you know your morals are against it, your values are against it. You totally disagree with it. You got to say, yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, that 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 makes a lot of sense. You got to basically co-sign on everything because the moment you don't, you will be eliminated. You will be executed. They will toss you quicker than salad. The moment you go against the movement. So that's another big issue um, when you try to become a part of the popular clique. Because you got to remember, popular cliques, because they are popular, they already feel this sense of entitlement that the majority of the knowledge and, and, and the uh, theories that they are sharing with others, they automatically feel like they are in the right because they got so many people that are co-signing with them on it. It could be like somebody on your job um, who's the popular 
executive director. Everybody's going to agree with that executive director, especially if that executive director has gotten all type of awards, has gotten employee of the year, has always gotten positive feedback, has always gotten popularity. Of course, um, everybody's going to, that, that, that particular executive is going to always feel that they are right because they have gotten so much recognition and so many people to follow their their beliefs and so many people to praise them for all of what they have done. So they're going to automatically feel superior, you know, so um, I lost my train of thought. It's, it's the sense of su it's superiority um, that um, a lot of these individuals have when they produce these uh, these, these popular clicks, you know, so. Um, the moment somebody slightly disagrees, uh, they're going to put you in your place, you know, because again, that's what made them popular. What made them popular is because the majority of everybody has praised them, has given them this admiration, which that's what gives you the key to become popular. Meaning a lot of people follow you. A lot of people respect you, or some people don't even so much respect you. Some people are popular because a lot of people fear them, meaning that if they don't kiss that person's behind, they don't want to be a target. And we have a lot of that um, going on in the YouTube streets. Um, a lot of people being popular with the high content creators because they fear becoming a target. Um, they don't they don't want to be on the hit list. So what better way if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> type of thing um and, and you have a lot of females they they will ride with the most popular females on youtube because they don't want to become a part of the 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 being talked about or or being or having their channels flagged so they rather stay in good with the popular female youtubers so they don't be on the hit list uh same things you have grown men around here that are trying to befriend or become close to the popular youtube guys because um they don't want to be seen as the better male they want to be seen as the alpha male they they know the dude that they're trying to get close to the popular the popular content creator he's the alpha male so they want to like the alpha male and what better way to look like one than uh um, become cool with the most popular content creator um, that way a lot of people will automatically associate you with that person and say okay he's not a better male because if he's cool with so-and-so and so I know so-and-so don't roll with anybody um, so um, but basically like I was saying you lose your identity you have to basically become um, a part of that person's team basically uh, it's like being on the football team. You want to be on our football team. You got to wear their uniform. If their uniform is all white, doesn't matter if you don't like white. It doesn't matter if you get white dirty um, easily. You got to go with their program. Um, you, you have to, uh, they say you got to be to practice five in the morning, whatever. You got to get up. You got to do it. In other words, you can no longer really be yourself. You cannot do what you want to do. You got to go with the flow. You got to go with the program of what that click expects out of you. And a lot of this is going on in the workplaces within the YouTube place. And, and, and this is what's going on. Um, a lot of people, they cannot be themselves. They cannot be who they truly are. Um, uh, some, sometimes people have to um, act out of character in order to, to prove their loyalty um, to the clique who has accepted them. Like, for instance, if I'm going to be a part of a channel where they bash black men, of course, I got to do the same thing, even if I really don't mean it. But if I want to earn that popularity, I want to earn that recognition by getting on with the biggest YouTube content creators that is what i got to do even if i, if I even if i don't want to be it if i want to be a popular part of this popular brand i got to do it and that's why we have a lot of phony men and women in the youtube streets that are um bonding with um popular content creators and they are not really who they are pretending to be they're just doing that to earn the recognition to earn a popularity to stay in good with that click so if they got the act like they hate black men uh, the to earn the recognition of these popular sisters they're going to do that we got some black men if they got to act like they hate all black women to get recognition of popularity they're going to do that um you know a lot of it is just stunting it's a showcase um half of them don't mean what they're putting out there but they Fear that if they were to be the real them and really be themselves and say, I really don't feel this way. I really don't, you know, 
it's going to, they're going to get castrated. Um, you have a lot of, um, actors and actresses, um, in the YouTube streets and in your workplace, you got people that are pretending to like certain things just to be close to the boss. Um, just to be close to the executive director, um, knowing they can't even stand that executive director. They can't even stand, you know what I mean? So, uh, but if that's what it takes to get you in through the door, they're going to do that. Now, this is the other thing, you know, if you have developed or created your own clique, you also got to be careful because it goes both ways. Not only do you have to be careful joining a clique by default, but content creators also have to be careful by allowing somebody to come into their group by default. If a person was let go of from a, a, um, a um, click or they was they was eliminated or they quit or whatever, that already, you know, it's like a red flag. Um, you know, as content creators, I know I'm one. Sometimes we're so willing to let somebody else come in, you know, um, especially if we think that person has been mistreated or that person has been done dirty, especially if they've been done dirty by people we don't get along with, we'll accept them and embrace them even quicker, you know, because it's our arch enemy. So, of course, anybody wants somebody from the from the arch enemy camp to come on, to put them on so they can put you on with all the secrets and put you on with how their whole operation is orchestrated and stuff like that. That's a win-win for you. But the bad part is if they turned on their own fellow sisters and their own fellow brethren, what makes you think they're going to give you the same loyalty? You know, I, I look at how people treat people. If you were loyal to somebody and you turned on them like a snake and now you coming over here wanting me to put you on and make you part of my craft and make you part of my team, I'm going to look at you sideways like wait a minute you want to come over here but you was kicking it with these girls or you've been kicking it with these dudes from day one they helped you to get to where you at and you mean to tell me you wasn't woman enough and man enough to fix your issues with them now you want to come over here so hell i wonder what's going to happen the moment me and you fall out and teeth and tongue fall out are you going to do me in the same way you did your fellow brethren or your fellow sisters people do not look at nothing and this is why it's so easy for your foundation to be destroyed because everybody has an open door policy. They're letting anybody in, especially if that person was a part of their enemy. They're even quicker to embrace them. I mean, I'm guilty of it. I did it. The times, you know, during my younger days, I was mad with a girlfriend of mine who pissed me off. Um, so when she fell out with somebody, you know, that I, that I didn't like or whatever, I would become cool with the person she fell out with. And we both would get together and spill the beans. Yeah, girl, when I was friends with her, she did this, she did that. What? Well, yeah, because she did this and did that. Now we both have bonded. And our friendship was not bonded through genuine means. We only bonded because we both shared the same enemy. And that that's not a good look either. That's why I said a lot of friendships and YouTube connections and clouts and stuff is being produced off of default. So it's down, it's bound to self-destruct sooner or later because you only joined whoever you needed to join because you was not at a good place with a prior group or a prior organization. So um, it's just very important. Um, I don't care if you're in the workplace. Um, I don't care if you uh, have a popular neighbors, you know, every everybody's always invited over to their barbecues and stuff, and they never invite you, and you was there for 20, 30 years, and here that somebody moved in next door, only been there for three months, and they invited them. Um, don't always try to join the bandwagon. Don't always try to go where it's popular. Um, you know, some people are, are, are popular only because they promote a lot of negativity, and unfortunately, we're in a society where people are very drawn to negativity. People love drama. People like chaos. So just because you see a lot of people flocking in one direction, um, it doesn't mean they're all going over there for the right reason. Everybody could be going over there because that's the drama. That's the chaos. That's what's popping. That's where they keep the beef. You know what I mean? That's where they keep entertaining them and, and, and keeping, um, you know, uh, uh, drama and stuff stirred up all the time. So um, you can't go by quantity but you have to go by quality um you have to be careful that you don't try so hard to fit in um uh, with popular clicks because you will lose yourself you will become more focused on trying to fit in trying to be ha trying to um prove your loyalty to them that you lose loyalty to yourself and it can happen you can get so caught up in friendship 
You get so caught up in a relationship. You get so caught up in trying to prove your loyalty to somebody that you lose you in the process. And I strongly feel there's a lot of sisters and brothers that are going to be losing themselves in these YouTube streets and all of these people that's trying to partake and be a part of all these popular cliques because, again, um, you was castrated or let go of or, you know, you put a coward move and you decided to jump ship from a group that accepted you and helped you to be the person you are today to help you to be successful um and you wasn't man enough to address it so you just jump ship you wasn't woman enough to address it so you just left and you went somewhere else um i think anybody who accepts people that have shown how they will do other people that have given them a chance you better better definitely take heed uh i would definitely reconsider you know what i mean <laughs> um just be careful you know uh when you taking somebody in you know that done left bad terms with folks because it just goes to show what you are in for you know i learned that the hard way i seen this one particular female i was friends with i saw how she do females i saw it in my face i saw how she do females when they fall out or when they or when there's a confrontation or there's an issue i seen how this broad would never take accountability she would always point the fingers at them and make it seem like something was wrong with them as they fought she ain't friends with them no more now i'm up here listening to her talk about these bras and in the back of my mind i'm like you know what this makes me question what type of broad you would be if me and you was to fall out if me and you was to have a confrontation and showing up that's just what happened she did me the same way she did the other chicks and i was like mocha you asked for that honey because the sign was right in front of your face you decided to be friends with this chick anyway seeing how she did in her other girlfriends before you Honey, a lot of us, we, we just set our own selves up to get played because we see what they do to other people and we think it's going to be different for us and child by it never is. So anyway, y'all, I have chatted on long enough. I just want to share this particular content. For those of you who are interested in cable, um, are you tired of paying Dish Network Direct TV? Your cable bill is almost 200 a month. I have my own live streaming cable service. Um, only $25 a month for two devices. You want three devices, $30 a month. No taxes, no late fees. I don't need your credit card information, none of that. You just cash out me every month and I can turn your cable on. You need a fire stick. I can send anybody who already has a fire stick. I can send you a free trial. Just email me. I'm trying to save y'all some money with this cable. One of my subscribers just signed up the other day and he's very happy with his um change and services he's saving more money um also you get free pay-per-view events you get all movies you get all series it is the bomb so i'm trying to save my people some money so i don't know why y'all insist on paying these cable companies all of this money when you ain't even got to do all that okay but you got to have an amazon fire stick you can purchase it from walmart or for amazon um best buy a couple of places got it but you have to have that and you have to have high speed internet i apologize but i cannot provide that to you um, you're going to have to have those sources in order for you to use my life services. But I promise you, you will be so happy when you make that change. You're going to save money. It's other things you could be doing with your money than giving these cable companies all these high price fees, paying them all these excess excessive fees. So anyway, y'all, um, make sure if you decide to, if you want to donate to my brand, you want to donate to my channel, you like the content that I'm putting out there, um, I would recommend that you please send it through my cash app. Um, the information is going to be in the box. Um, something about when you send it through Super Chat, YouTube gets a percentage of it and then they take forever to send it. So if you really want to donate, you know, I would suggest that you do it through uh, my cash app. But guess what? Beggars can't be choosy. If you got to super chat me, guess what? I'm not going to complain. I'm going to accept it. I just got to wait on it. So that's fine. Beggars can't be choosy because guess what? I'm broke. So I don't have the right to tell folks how to spend their money when it comes to me. Or you can pay Palette as well. So anyway, y'all, please leave your comment below. Let me know what y'all think about these popularity clicks. Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? 
Give me some examples when you tried to join a popular group and how it backfired or you brought somebody in to join your popular group and how it backfired. Um, I'm interested in knowing um, what's your intake on this. So anyway, everyone, this is your girl, Lady Mocha. Remember, I'm going to always pour you a cup of truth and I'm going to always break you off a slice of knowledge. Y'all take care and I'll be hollering at y'all soon. Don't forget to subscribe if this is your first time here and you love today's content. And please, before y'all leave, make sure you thumb me up thumb me down whatever you got to do but just make sure you hit that like button okay y'all have a blessed one bye